Hey, fourth graders, welcome to library time. I am going to continue reading our book already for Walk Two Moons. Um, we're on chapter 24, and this one's called Birds of Sadness. And remember, they were just in the Badlands. Let's see what's going on now. As we were leaving the Badlands, Gramps swore at a driver who cut us off. Usually, Gramps swore like this. Graham would threaten to go back and live with the egg man. I don't know that whole story, just that one time when Gramps was swearing up a storm, Graham ran off with a man who regularly bought eggs for Gramps. Hmm, Graham stayed there for three days with that egg man and three nights until Gramps finally came to get her and promised he would never swear anymore. I once asked Graham if she would really go back to the egg man if Gramps did swear too much. She said, well, now don't tell your grandfather, but I really don't mind it that much. And besides, the egg man snored to beat the band. So she was not going to go back to the egg man. Well, so why, so you didn't leave Gramps just because he was swearing? Salamanca. I don't even remember why I did that. Sometimes, you know, in your heart, you love someone, but you have to go away before your head can figure it out. Well, that night, we stayed at a motel outside of Wall, South Dakota. They had one room left and only one bed in it, but Gramps was tired, so he said it would have to do. The bed was a king-size water bed. Have you, have you ever slept on a waterbed before? It is a bed full of water. One of my best friends growing up had one, so we always, it's like sleeping on a boat. <laughs> well, remember, Gramps says this a lot. God dang, Gramps said, looky there. And he pressed his hand on it and it gurgled. Well, it looks like we'll have to float on this raft together tonight. Graham flopped down on the bed and started giggling. Huzza, huzza, she said in her raspy voice. She rolled onto the middle, huzza, huzza, and I laid down with her, and Gramps tentatively sat down on the other side. Whoa, I do believe this thing's alive, he said. The three of us lay there sloshing around as Gramps turned this way and that. Well, he said, go and tears were streaming down Graham's face because she was giggling so hard. You know what Graham said? Well, this ain't our marriage bed. <laughs> that night I dreamed that I was floating down on a river on a raft with my mother and we were lying on our backs looking up at the high sky and the sky moved closer and closer to us. There was a sudden popping sound and then we were up in the sky and Mama looked all around and said, we can't be dead. We were just alive a minute ago. And remember that's what she said about the baby. In the morning, we set out for the Black Hills and Mount Rushmore, hoping to be there by lunchtime. And no sooner were we in the car than Gramps said, so what happened to Peavy's mother? And did Peavy get any more of those messages? Oh, I hope everything turned all right, Graham said. I'm a little worried about Phoebe. On the day after Phoebe showed her father the suspicious spots and the unidentifiable hair strands, another message appeared. You can't keep the birds of sadness from flying over your head, but you can keep them from nesting in your hair. Hmm. Phoebe brought the message to school to show me. It's the lunatic again, she said. If he has already kidnapped your mother, why would he still be believing you messages? They're clues, she said. At school, people kept asking Phoebe her mother's, about her mother's business trip to London. She tried to ignore them, but it wasn't always possible. She had to answer them some of the time. When Megan asked Phoebe what sights her mother had seen, Phoebe said, Buckingham Palace. Of course, Megan nodded knowingly. And Big Ben. And Phoebe was struggling. Um, Shakespeare's birthplace. But that's not in London. I thought you said your mother was in London. 
Stratford is where that is. Stratford's miles away. Did, did she go on a day trip or something? Oh, yes, that's what she did. She went on a day trip. Phoebe couldn't help it. She looked as if the, a whole family of the birds of sadness were nesting in her hair. In English class, Ben had to give his mythology report. He was so nervous. He explained that Prometheus stole fire from the sun and gave it to man. And Zeus, the chief god, was angry at man at Prometheus for taking some of his precious sun. And as a punishment, Zeus sent Pandora, which is a woman, to man. And then Zeus changed chained Prometheus to a rock and sent vultures down to eat Prometheus' liver. Oh, in Ben's nervousness, he mispronounced Prometheus. And so what he was actually saying was that Zeus sent vultures down to eat porpoises' liver. <laughs> Mary Lou invited both me and Phoebe to dinner that night. When I phoned my father, he said he didn't mind which I knew he wouldn't. All he said was, that'll be nice for you, Sal. Maybe I'll just go over and eat at Margaret's. All right, that's the end of chapter 24. And our next chapter will be 25, cholesterol. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.